we just had the Security Council meeting on Venezuela, and what I explained to my counterparts is the United States' reason for calling this meeting was not to be intrusive. It was not to be heavy-handed. It was the fact that we've seen dozens killed. We've seen many injured. We've seen 150 political prisoners, over 1,500 arrests, and clearly we're starting to see serious instability in Venezuela. So what we looked at was, what are the factors that can really stabilize Venezuela? Well, as many of my colleagues said, this should be taken up in the Human Rights Council. Well, yes, it should be taken up in the Human Rights Council, but why is it not? Because Venezuela sits on the Human Rights Council, and they have blocked any sort of hearing to have um, to discuss the issues in Venezuela. Then you say, okay, the OAS, which we fully support. We support a regional solution. We very much support the OAS, and we encourage them to do whatever it takes to get a political solution and to get these talks going. Well, when the OAS tried to deal with it, what happened? Venezuela pulled out. So clearly, Venezuela doesn't want to be told what to do. All we are asking, we are not for the opposition, we're not for President Maduro, we're for the Venezuelan people. We are saying, show respect to the Venezuelan people. They need to have free and fair elections. They need to make sure that there's not, they need to release all political prisoners. The humanitarian situation needs to be addressed. They're without medicine. They're starting to go without food. There's serious issues that we're seeing in terms of the humanitarian issue. They need to respect the Constitution and allow the National Assembly to continue. So what we attempted to do in this meeting today is about prevention. We've been down this road with Syria, with North Korea, with South Sudan, with Burundi, with Burma. We've been down this road. And rather waiting for a, a serious situation where we have to have it in an open Security Council meeting, why not get in front of this? Why not try and stop a problem before it starts? So the United States very much encourages the OAS. We are thrilled that they are having their ministerial on the 31st. What we hope is that we can continue to support the region in pushing Venezuela to really listen to the Venezuelan people, because we think that if that doesn't happen, we will certainly be hearing this in the Security Council, because it will be a real problem, not just in the region, but internationally. What do you think should happen in Venezuela for the Security Council, Council actually to consider further uh, steps? And also, do you believe that this briefing should lead to any further discussions? What should happen in Venezuela so the Security Council maybe does more? This briefing, the intent of this briefing was to make sure every Everyone is aware of the situation that's happening in Venezuela, and we were briefed on that. It was for everyone to encourage the OAS to not just talk about it, but to move on it and really get to that political solution. And it is to encourage President Maduro to respect his people and realize it, while we were in there, a report hit that 2,600 more troops are being sent out to deal with protesters in the western region. This isn't getting better, it's getting worse. And what we're trying to say is the international community needs to say, Respect the human rights of your people, or this is going to go in the direction we've seen so many others go. Oh my the United States insists on changing the government of Venezuela and doesn't support the dialogue with the opposition to resolve the situation. I mean, obviously that's what should happen, is the government and the opposition need to come together. But don't lose sight of the people, right? This is, you can look at the United States, it's very divided. But we have protests, and those things can happen, but don't lose sight of the rights of the people. And that's really what we're starting to see in Venezuela is suddenly you're pushing the elections off. Suddenly you're saying you're arresting protesters. We're seeing deaths happen. We're seeing you know, political prisoners. That's not the way to respect your people. When you start doing that, it is natural that people are going to start to push back, and they have to start looking at that treatment. What specifically is do you would you like to see the Security Council do? We are not to follow this up. We are not looking for Security Council action. What we were looking for was for the Security Council to notice exactly what the situation is in light of prevention, be cautious in this area and know that we need to be watching it because it could get worse 
before it gets better. Um, hey, that, that's it, everybody. That's I'll get one last are one. Are you concerned by President Trump's remarks to Director Comey, and do you still have confidence in President Trump? Well, I, honestly, what I've seen is just a lot of hearsay, and I'm waiting to see evidence and proof, and I think that's what everyone wants to see, is if there's something there, show it. But right now, um, you know, for all of us, none of us were there, none of us were in the room, none of us knows what's real and what's not real. And so I think that um, now's the time for evidence, and then decisions can happen after that. But really, right now, it's just a lot of swirling rumors, and it's hard to decipher what's real and what's not. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.